Howdy folks, my name is Darren from RC Scale Models and today we have another kit review. This one's on Hobby 2000's Arado AR234 V2 First Operational Photo Reconnaissance and German um, Jet Bomber in 148 scale. This is a rebox of a Hasegawa kit. Um, it's not a bad thing. Hobby 2000 do rebox from other manufacturers. Uh, Hasegawa in the UK is hard to come by at the moment and can be expensive if you do manage to find some. So it's a good thing that they've reboxed uh, Hasegawa and other manufacturers because they're doing it at a nice reasonable price. You do get a little bit of extra. This one comes with a mask set. Um, so pretty cool. As for, for what we get in the kit, we take a look. Pretty nice box art. Uh, a little bit of history on the Hoado. One of the paint schemes, uh, kit number 48009, that's 148 scale. Some more history in some other languages. So, what we get inside the box, it's a nice box art, it's printed nicely, um, pretty sturdy boxes, um, standard box size, what we get inside is a nice booklet, there's a pull out page, some markings, another nice touch with these kits, you do get some masks, um, so we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. So we'll say is the Hasegawa kit, separate clear and typical Hasegawa one bag. So those for the instructions. Very first is your sprue layout. Good way of checking, make sure everything's in within your kit. Colour call outs. You can see AK Reinteractive, you got Tamir colours there, Mr. Hobby, Tacker, so quite a range of paints. Um, if you can do your references and compare what paints you use, should be no problem. This is pretty much all the steps, 16 steps in total. Should be a pretty simple kit to build, but it's quite detailed. Hasagawa did good stuff in the day. Um, like I say, Hasagawa can be a little bit expensive and hard to come by at the moment. And this is a good way of getting it by going through Hobby 2000. First step is working on the cockpit tub, seat going in, flight stick, pedals, instrument dials, radio equipment, all that kind of thing. You do get a decal. For the instrument panel or you wish to uh, probably paint it up um, I have looked for aftermarket for this kit and I can't seem to find anything because I do like to spruce my kits up a little bit sometimes but this is probably be a case of just doing it straight out of the box because there is nothing out there like that I can find step two is here is once the cockpit's built up you've got the two side parts I believe these are clear but we will check that you've got the nose cone the wheel well and some piping and then there's the top of the uh, canopy going in on step three which is I think is clear so let's say you've got nice masks anyway with the kit which should make this easier for masking you can do the photo reconnaissance version because there's two lots of cameras you could probably do cameras and bombs together but we're not sure step six no going to step uh, this is two, one, two, this is step four, sorry, step five is down here, and it's the uh, two-sided, the wheel bay and the legs, and then step six is the wheel bay is going in, the uh, bomb uh, housing, the cameras, and sandwiching it all together, so you've got to build these sub-assemblies and then sandwiching it up. Pretty standard and pretty easy. Wheels going in. 
Uh, unfortunately, the landing gear you, you had to do previously. There's a back plate going in, which has got two squares and two pieces of clear going in, which is where the cameras sit. So it is cameras and bombs together. Um, I suppose it makes sense to take pictures of the target, fly over again if you've got time, bomb it, and then take pictures of the aftermath that you make sure you've done the job properly. I suppose. Second uh, step nine is the two lower wings and upper wing section. Engine they sells. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they might be the same engines that they used in the 262. Um, once that is done, you can attach the engine they sells to the lower wing and the upper wing section, and that kind of assembly can be attached to the fuselage. We have got a firewall going in, the other wings going in at the back. Unfortunately, the wings are molded as a straight one piece, I believe. There are no flaps. Extra fuel tanks, bombs. Um, these are thousand pound bombs. Doesn't say uh, how many litres of fuel tank. You've got these weird pieces. Uh, like a form of rocket type. Probably help with takeoff. I'm not 100% sure, but this is rocket system this rocket assembly is for nose wheel going in and the landing gear doors pretty standard and then adding the bombs rockets fuel tanks uh, and we've got a drag hook as well on the back of the aircraft Attaching the front nose to the body, hopefully that's not a major fit issue, but it should be okay. A couple of pitot tubes, and it's ready for paint. Uh, first option at the top here is the Arado from 1945, uh, February in Germany. Um, pretty standard to spin the camouflage on top of it, and then you've got the, this whitewash effect over the top of it colors for your rockets and then this one here is 1944 which is a little bit earlier this is spring in Germany and it's just straight up camouflage straight up splinter camo so no doubt if you want to do the splinter camouflage for this top one it'd be the same as the bottom one but then with the whitewash on top pretty sta standard German colors they've used it is the uh, German Luftwaffe dark brown and the uh, Luftwaffe dark green and the uh, Luftwaffe colour on the bottom, which is, to my understanding, which is number C, which is RML 76 for the blue. The uh, green is RML 82, light green. And the brown is RLM 81 brown, which is pretty standard for German, German colours. Like I mentioned before, masks. Not sure who would they get their masks done by. But it is a nice touch you get them in the kit. Because normally I buy aftermarket mask for my kit because I find it easier to do. Here is the markings. Pretty standard stuff. You do get a swastika. And it is split up. That's how they get around it. Uh, pretty standard markings. You do get the instrument panel as well. As for the key itself, is in these two bags. So, further ado, we get over a look inside this kit now. We we'll start with the clear. So if anyone's in uh, built this kit in the past, when it's obviously uh, Hasegawa, you know what it's like. Um, so here's the clear nose. A little bit distortion because it's a com complex curve, but it's still pretty good. It's a nice framing.
And here are the other sides of the aircraft. Um, let's do this. So here's the uh, nice clear piece. Here's the top. Here's the other side. There is another piece of clear. So here's part of the uh, back part where the uh, cameras will uh, so you see the cameras through. Landing lights are standard. And here is another piece at the back for more cameras. Sorry, my, my mistake. This is the camera option. And this piece is for the uh, top of the aircraft. So this one giant bag is the complete kit. I'm never a fan of manufacturers doing anything like this because parts can come off and it, this is how the kit can get damaged. Especially after a period of time of it being moved around and it starts to rub and whatever. So first sprue. Half of the uh, fuselage. We have those rockets. Wings, fuel tanks and bulkhead. So here's the detail for the bulkhead. Typical Hasegawa detail. Fuel tanks. Wings. Inside the wheel well. A little bit of wiring and plumbing. You could spruce it up a little bit if you check your references. Um, these are those rockets. They come as two halves. There will be two of these sprues, I believe, because there should be two of everything. So this is sprue A. Here is sprue F, engine nacelles, fronts of the engines, uh, wheels, parts of landing gear and cockpit tub. So here is the engine nacelles. Like I say, I think they are the 262 engines or same or similar. Landing gear segments, part of the uh, dash really detailed here is the cockpit tub there's a lot of detail there so I probably wouldn't do the decal I'll probably actually try and paint this one up landing gear segments inside the engines nicely done so they've, they've made them see through We have this sprue here, small one, sprue K, contains detailed parts for the uh, camera system. We have this another sprue, sprue F, and this is Small detail parts. Sprue L. And this contains part of the bomb assembly. Two halves. Fins. Actually, this tire sprue is the whole tire bomb, I think, if I'm not mistaken. This sprue here, main wheels, more landing gear, 
here's the main wheels they are two halves little bit of radio equipment there some pitot tubes so be t careful taking these off the sprue because they can easily snap some of the aerials another piece of radio equipment and standard landing gear a little bit of burring easy clean up more landing gear segments and a couple of more radios sprue D his main wings this is the lower wing section and flaps and part of the I'm not sure what they are part of the engine maybe this is the main wing section we have these cylinder pieces I think these are parts of the engine flaps turbines and uh, upper wing section pretty standard stuff for Hasegawa nicely done and then we have the other side of the other part of the sprue which is pretty much what we've seen before which is the other side so this contains the Bombay bit as well and a different bulkhead down here There's the rack for the bomb, more flaps, wings, fuel tanks, and the other side of the fuselage. Pretty standard stuff from Hasegawa. Like I say, it's the uh, V box in. So there you are, my friends. There's another kit from Hobby 2000, it's the Rado, 148 scale, like I say it's the first jet bomber. Like, comment, subscribe and I'll catch you later.